What's going on UDM Pro users? Today we're gonna to take some time to set up a secure remote access VPN that's gonna allow you access to your internal network from anywhere in the world. And we're gonna do it using all of the tools available in the unified network application. Before we get into it a little bit further, we wanna go ahead and talk about why you would even want to provision your own VPN. Uh, then we would talk about why you wouldn't want to provision your own VPN and there's a, a pretty important reason there, so check that out. Uh, after that, we're going to discover, uh, we're going to cover a basic diagram of like how a VPN actually works. And, and that'll really help uh, kind of put pieces together as far as what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about Ubiquiti's implementation of encryption and authentication. Because as we know, L2TP itself is not uh, encrypted, right? It doesn't natively provide encryption. Uh, but don't worry, we'll talk about how Ubiquiti handled that. Uh, if at any time you just want to go ahead and configure the dang thing and be done with it, uh, go ahead and skip to the time I mentioned over there and you'll be ready to go. All right, so let's get into a couple of reasons about why you should actually use your own VPN service. Reason number one is to securely connect to the internet from any foreign or public network in the world. Right now, you can use public VPN services like Nord, Mulvad, uh, Firefox VPN. However, one thing that you don't control in those aspects is the actual head end, right? You're leaving that up to a third party organization who you now have to trust to protect your data and not do anything funky with it right now. A lot of the times, if you're just a normal person, that's absolutely fine. And that's great. And these services are wonderful. I personally use Mulvad pretty often. Uh, however, the fact is it is not your own, right? So configuring that is really good for that purpose. But that brings us to point number two, which is significantly more important uh, of a reason to use your own VPN, which is accessing your own internal home or office network. This is going to open up doors if you're hosting services at home like Plex Media Server. Now you can actually access that Plex Media Server from anywhere in the world without doing any NAT or forwarding or otherwise exposing your own Plex server to you know the world, right? You can just VPN into your own network and boom, Plex thinks that you're on your own network now and you're good to go. You can do that to access your own files, your password database, anything, right? That's why it's really important to have your own VPN so you can access this really critical data and sometimes media files uh, from anywhere. So now it's time to be a little bit more responsible and talk about why you would not want to provision your own remote access VPN server in your own home or office location. Uh, and that reason is because, right, you were not anonymous on this VPN, on this type of VPN. And that's crazy because everybody thinks, hey, VPN, uh, VPN and anonymous are synonymous. Well, generally, that's that's pretty true, right? However, in this case, let's go ahead and refer to the diagram about how a VPN actually works and why you're not anonymous using your own home remote access VPN server. So we're going to go over this at a super high level and as quickly as possible to understand why you wouldn't be anonymous in this situation. Over here on the left, here you are at the library. You're, us you're using your 2007 Razer flip phone to connect to facebook.com. You're going to communicate with the router who is going to send that to his service provider out 11111 through the fabric to 33333 Facebook. Facebook gets the packet, understands where it's coming from, and sends it back to the library. Where does the VPN come into play here? When you're using the VPN, you're effectively introducing a middleman to send or kind of proxy, if you will, all of your data before going to its final destination. Then when you actually implement things like um, encryption, you're kind of jumbling that data inside of an encapsulated packet so that the guys who are on uh, your, your current subnet don't actually get the opportunity to understand what this data is because it's now encrypted and it's no longer in clear text. So now getting back to that first original scenario where you're at the library, now you're connected to the VPN and you want to communicate to Facebook. What happens is you generate the packet, the HTTP request on your phone, you encrypt it, you encapsulate it, and you send it to the router on your local subnet. Your local router sees, okay, this is encapsulated L2TP 17, port 1701 traffic, and it sends it to your public IP of 22222, aka your own personal VPN hub, right? So now when your VPN hub gets this information, it basically undoes that encapsulation and uh, encryption, aka decapsulation and decryption, and it forwards the packet to Facebook. 
Facebook gets the packet and it's coming from your VPN hub. And that's why you're not anonymous, right? Because even though you're using this VPN, um, Facebook knows where it's coming from. It knows it's coming from you. So if that packet sent to Facebook is actually containing malicious, uh, malicious nonsense, I guess, right? It knows that, Hey, it's coming from this guy's home network right here. Um, so it would not be a very advisable idea to uh, pursue activities thinking you're anonymous uh, using your own personal little VPN setup at home. Uh, but moving on, we will talk about how Ubiquity actually implements these uh, encryption and authentication technologies because we do know and understand that L2TP natively just by itself does not actually support encryption. So we're not going to dive like super deep into the uh, specifics here about how these technologies actually work, right? But just understand that your L2TP connection, your tunnel, your, your tunnel connection will be encrypted with IPsec using uh, pre-shared keys, right? So uh, this is going to scramble your data. It's not going to be in clear text. IPsec will have you encrypted. Uh, and for authentication, Ubiquity actually turns itself into a nice little radius, which is basically like an authentication server where you can create users who have to sign in using passwords, right? So in addition to the uh, encryption, now you're getting another layer of authentication protection and you're only allowing people on your network who have established accounts, which also leads to accounting, right? You can understand who's accessing what, you can control who's accessing what, so very cool and can be very secure. All right, so now that we know absolutely everything there is to know under the sun about Ubiquity's L2TP implementation, we can go ahead and open up our console and get into the configurations. All right, so it's finally time to get into it. Go ahead and load up your web GUI and navigate on over to the settings page within your unified network application. So I'm gonna go ahead and go there real quick now. All right, so when you navigate on over to the settings section of the network application, the first thing I want you to take note about is the radius profile. So go ahead and navigate down to profiles as I just did there. Scroll down and click on the default radius profile here. Uh, really, if, if it's not enabled here, you don't necessarily need to enable. It will automatically be enabled, um, but I guess you might as well if it's not. So click the enable button. Make sure you have a secure shared secret. Uh, and that's both wired and wireless is on if you're going to be using it for port based security. Um, it's important to note, don't change any of these defaults here. These are the uh, authentication and accounting ports that are going to be used under the hood uh, when communicating through uh, 802.1x. So I guess what, what you really need to notice here is that there are actually no user users created, um, but you don't need to create any now. So let's navigate over to teleport and VPN and we can get started configuring our VPN server. Uh, so what you need to do first is click the enabled button that turns the server that turns the service on and enables the VPN. Next, what you need to do is type in a really secure pre shared P. As you can see, mine is super secure. Now, right underneath it, obviously you can't see this because it's blurred out to protect my own identity, you're going to need to put in your server address. This is going to be the IP address that's attached to one of your WAN interfacings, AKA the interface that's attached to your service provider. Um, and this is going to act as the uh, source interface for the L2TP tunnel. Now, finally, right below that, we're going to create our new user. We're going to call him user and we're going to say password or a password, All right? There we go. Create new user and apply. So we aren't done here yet. I just want to go back and show you something. We'll go back over into the profiles, uh, find the radius profile. And now look, here is our user, All right? You can click on him and change the tunnel type. And now again, you need to be careful here. This may uh, affect the functionality, but there's lots of different granular options you can do here. Uh, but for now, we'll go back here because we're not done. We want to go ahead into the advanced configuration. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. We're going to go to manual. Uh, we are going to name our network. This is the portion where you're effectively allocating a subnet uh, to your VPN. So we're going to name our network VPN. Uh, my gateway is going to be 1003-1, and I want to use that 1003-0/24 network. Uh, so we're going to keep that slash 24 mask here. Uh, now you don't have to enable uh, any of these, you know, the name server, the win server. That's fine. This is definitely not going to be an, a site-to-site -site VPN in this situation. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they have a whole separate option for that. So I would probably not even configure this. 
uh, you can opt to uh, require strong authentication and I would definitely not allow weak ciphers. But for now, we're going to leave these as is. Click OK. And that's that, right? Now we can actually go ahead and uh, configure the client side for the VPN service and log in and just get connected. So I'm going to use my iPhone for this example. I'll go ahead and show a screen recording of how now you're actually going to get connected. Cool. So now that you have the uh, VPN server configured on the UDM Pro side, it's time to open up your client and get into the configurations. So uh, on your iPhone, go ahead and navigate to the general settings, then on down to general, get on, on to the VPN and device management. Now, uh, these settings are going to be different per device, but here again, we're going to be doing this on iOS. So we're going to be adding a new VPN configuration and then under the type, make sure we select L2TP because that's the type of tunnel we're using. Uh, you can type in a description here, which is basically a name, a name. I'm going to call mine internal access. So under the server here, you're going to implement your public IP address that was tied to your WAN facing interface. I'm going to type in mine here, obviously blur this out from you, but you're going to want to put yours in here. And then one other thing to note is that unless you paid for a static IP address assignment from your ISP, um, this is a dynamic IP. It's possible this actually changes and your VPN breaks, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, so for your account, you're going to input the credentials that you uh, created when you did the radius step and your password as well, which I think mine is literally just password. For your secret here, we're going to go ahead and put in the pre-shared key that we assigned to the server, which in my case is pre-share. Super duper secure, I know. When we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and select done and connect. Wait a few seconds here and we should be online. And there you go. So now that we're online, we can go ahead and files. Here we go. Let's see, we're scanning. Oh, no, we're not. Here is my own little storage vault, right? So now I'm on my network. I have access to my own files and I can do whatever I need. But uh, that's really the whole purpose of this video, guys, was to set you guys up with a remote access VPN that's both secure and highly functional. Uh, it takes a pretty minimal toll on the system as far as performance goes as well. So, uh, you know, as usual, if you guys have any questions, let me, do another, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to uh, stay active there and keep up to date with those. But otherwise... I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming. Peace out.